Hello everybody, welcome back to the Tone Aries podcast. Before we get into it there, we just want to remind people that you know, we're supported through Danny Donovan at quickminutes.com. Mm. Yeah, Danny's a, a very good friend of both myself and James. He comes from the north side as well and he grew up locally and, <clears throat> you know, he's a, been a massive supporter of the podcast and both myself and James since we actually began and, you know, he's uh, he has his own company called Quick Minutes now and and quickminutes.com is a meeting management application for um, semi-formal and formal meetings. And look, if you want to know more about that, quickminutes.com and supporting Danny, supporting us. Um, so if you're interested in that, check them out and enjoy the rest of the podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Two Norries podcast. I'm your host, James. I'm not joined by my good friend, Timmy Long. Hi, everyone. Rowan is on the deck. Say hi, Rowan. Hi, Rowan. We have the Irish prison officer, press officer, Alan Armstrong. How are you, Alan? Good man, thanks for the invitation. As you heard it, we're in a prison, we're in Cork prison, and we're with a chap from Mayo called Michael Mann. Michael, how are you? I'm good now in ourselves. I'm great. First of all, thanks a million for agreeing to come on the podcast. That's good, thanks. This is the second time we've done one in prison. It's the first time we've done one with a male prisoner. So we were in Limerick previously with a lady, and it went really well. So um, I know you're probably a little bit nervous, but enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? You're the first male prisoner on the podcast, so it's great to have you. But we'll just go back, right, and just for the people that don't know it, do you want to tell us a little bit about who you are and where you're from? <clears throat> yeah, I'm Michael Mann. I'm from uh, Castle Barn, County Mayo. Uh, I'm 20 years of age. Uh, growing up, growing up in, in, in Castle Bar, uh, especially when I was school, Mm. Uh, primary school. It wasn't the best, you know, it wasn't the best. It was uh, a lot of uh, favoritism going on with the teachers for their own, like the travelers, like the travelers didn't get the best of a time. Your the, traveler, Michael. Yeah, yeah. And do you think that the tr- teachers treated you differently? 100%. Discrimination? Yeah, like? yeah, 100%. What was it like? Like, it was embarrassing, to be honest. Mm. <laughs> You go into a classroom, you're expecting to, to learn things like from teachers, like you know, I've, like, mm. but what used to happen to me was I was just given a book and a pencil and just threw it down to the bottom of the, the corner of the class. Mm. And anytime I asked a question, I was just blank. And if, if, if he asked, like, if I keep asking some questions, trying to find out what's going on, I've been sent to punishment. Mm. You know, and like, it was tough because I didn't really learn nothing. Like, I went to school for two years. Well, I'd done my primary school. I finished that. And when I was going into secondary school, I could barely read and write, like. Mm. I was going into secondary school now, like, you know. And there was, like, in secondary school, it was much the same. Yeah. Much the same in secondary school, like. Our teach, teachers were, like, were provoking you, you know, like. Like, not, not, like, not, like not treating you as uh, all the rest, all the same as is, 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 is in the class, like. Mm. And uh, I finished first year. I was probably more wiser through my education, finishing sixth class in primary school than what I was when I finished first year in, in secondary school, mm. you know? And in second second year then, uh, that's when you know, downhill, mm. the educating for, for me in the school, like, or just, I was in a class one day, I was in metalwork, it was a double class. And uh, a few, few, uh, had a few mates in there as well, like, and we're sitting down and we're, we're making something, don't know what it was again, it was something, I don't know. But uh, anyway, we were making it anyway. And uh, a teacher comes around behind me and he goes, he said, uh, are you going to rob daddy, yeah? And I'm looking at him and I said, why, why would I rob, why, why would I start robbing something for? And he goes, you're a fucking knacker. You're a knacker, you know? Mm. And I thought I was hearing things, you know? So I just did, didn't say nothing, didn't say nothing. Then a friend, but wasn't a traveler, and the, he was the far side of the class, he hears this and he, he shouts over. He said, Michael, you all right, you all right? I said, yeah, I'm grand, I'm grand. So when I was, the, the two classes finished, and uh, I was walking up, I think it was lunchtime, and we were walking up to a canteen, 
And the same teacher comes up behind me again and he goes, you're not wanted in this school, you're not wanted in this school. You're a knacker, you're a knacker, you're not wanted in this school, you know? And then that had me thinking then like, must they fight me wait, must they fight me waiting in school? Of course, you know, when, I'm go when I have to go through all this, like, you know, so then I was walking, I was walking after the same day and school was finished. I was walking, walking home. I was just walking out the front door of school and a young fella on the bike that was in the same class as me, you know, he then he starts it, you know, and about travellers, travellers this, and you should go back to your heart and sights and mm. go back to your caravans. And he was sitting on his bike. I just remember going over to him and just grabbing him and just pulling him off the bike. I didn't touch him, I just pulled him off the bike like, and I was, I was going to start, but I didn't. And then I goes home, tells my family. So I comes back into school the next morning, or I didn't want to go back into school. Mm. Because I knew what it was, what was going to happen, like, and uh, comes back in the next morning. Principal calls me in straight away. Right, we're going to expel you. I said, for what? He said, oh, we're pulling, pulling a pupil off the, off the bike outside the, the school. So I said, no problem. So he goes home, tells my mother, and she, I, I told my mother everything what happened over being called this that. So I couldn't get back into that school. So then there was three more secondary schools in around that area. And I went to one to get me in into it, a different one, St. Charles it was called. And they wouldn't take me, wouldn't give me a reason. They said they wouldn't take me. Then there was one a couple of miles outside where I lived in Val. And I goes into that one and they said, yeah, 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 no problem. We'll take you, we'll, we'll, we'll give you, we'll give you like what time of day, whatever. And we're coming in and like bring on a little tour before they, 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 they yeah. take you on for the school. Like, and they're bringing me into classrooms and showing like, and I goes home and I said, yeah, yeah, lovely. I'm starting a new school. I think we're starting that Monday. And Friday comes, my mother gets a phone call and said, no, we can't take him into the school. He said, because something happened in his first, school that we're after hearing about and we can't take a chance on them. That's where, that's when everything went downhill for me then like, mm. and all this, like, then, yeah. <clears throat> like, my mother, she was trying and trying and trying. Then I remember some lady coming down, I was getting homeschooled for a while, you know, in the site. And I was learning. But then it only lasted about, she was only there for about four or five weeks. And yeah. she said that she didn't want to come down no more because she felt intimidated by the sights. Mm. And so that was me then walking up and down the streets. Doesn't know? that um, really turn you against schools and teachers and people, in general people, you know, growing up, like I would have been around travellers a lot. You know, and, you know, the way travellers say yeah, buffers. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it really turn you against a buffer, somebody that, like that, because of what, like kids, I've often said this, kids can be very, you know, they can be cruel yeah. with their wording, but a lot of kids would call you whatever, knack or whatever. They don't understand what they're even saying or how it's going to affect you. They don't understand what, what they're hearing in their own Do you own know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, they're yeah. listening to table talk yeah, at home yeah, from yeah, the parents, yeah. right? But like for a teacher to say something like that inside in a school to a child, yeah. like I actually feel sorry for that man if he's carrying on like that at the yeah. age of him, you know, because like that kind of talk to a child is 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 disgusting. Yeah, because chil yeah. children are, children are innocent. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And like everybody deserves an education. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And you're only child and you're experiencing that. But I remember, like, where we me and Timmy's from, lots of travellers, where we're from, you know, we were growing up with travellers and that. But I remember travellers in the school being moved on out of the school quickly. Like, I remember a fellow in my class in primary school, he was about three years older than me. And then I remember there was another fellow in my class, about three years younger than me. And a fella came in, they say if I was in first class, the second class, they say, traveller comes in first, first year, mm. first class, and then he's doing his confirmation before me. Yeah. It's like they moved the man quickly to get them out, you know? Yeah. And yeah. like we spoke with Amory Quilligan. I don't know if you've seen that. She's a traveler lady from Newcastle West. 
and my wife was traveling too so they were talking about the education and even today you still have like travelers on reduced timetables so like we'll only we'll take them but they can only come in for an hour in the day and then they have to be out you know what i mean so it's still an issue today but it's uh, i can hear the heart and everything you know what i mean yeah, yeah. i can looking at you know as i think now you as a 12 year old you know being told that by a teacher yeah, yeah. and I, I couldn't imagine being told that by a teacher you know mm, or even but, your mother even trying to get yeah. you to a school knowing that she oh, didn't was, want you on the street it was tough on my age. mother like you know she's yeah. she like, i seen it in her like she often go crying and everything at home yeah. she, she, there was nothing that, that she was able to do for me yeah. even though she was trying her best yeah. to get me into the schools and up but there was no school to take me like yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. but you know like as some as pe people like us with criminal convictions sometimes they can follow you and stop you from getting jobs but imagine having something like that as a child stopping you from getting an education. Yeah. It's messed yeah. up. Like Just and because it, you're a traveller. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Yeah. Like. And it'll give you a messed up, you know, attitude towards anybody in authority yeah. after that. You're thinking if the teachers know we're like this, well then that sets me up the whole world is going to be like this, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, when before we move on, what was it like at home? And have you got brothers and sisters, big family? What was that like? I have seven brothers. Um, no sisters. Uh Home is like anyone else's home, like just all day for each other, you know. Yeah. Uh, so it was just the school was the, you know, yeah. at least you had home was like, you know, the family, yeah. the happy place, the safe place. What happened when you left school? I was about 13, 14 when I left school. Nothing to do, man. Uh, walking up and down the street, in the town. Before I knew it, then I was started off by breaking into cars, you know, uh, like in smoking, started smoking hash mm. at the age of 15. I started smoking hash. Then I just met new friends and they were taking other drugs, like coke and tablets and speed and you know, we just came to an age where I was always gone away all day every day that my parents kind of got used to me not being around that much so then I was getting it into my head then that I could do whatever I want at the age of 16 17 you know yeah and before you know it then I was sitting in front of stolen cars and uh Taking, then I started taking coke, coke. I'd often wait up for maybe a full week taking coke, like mm. not going home. Mm. It comes with that then is the life, like to be able to feed those habits then, because that, that was, I'd be very similar to yourself, to be able to feed them habits, like you have to feed them yeah. with some form of finance, like, yeah. and, and, and that always comes down to robbing. Yeah. For me, it was robbing houses, robbing shops, robbing people didn't matter you know well, i just needed to get stoned 24 7 yeah, to be yeah. able to focus and function in, in the world i was living in you know yeah like yeah that would have been the same for me as well like ralph robin like houses robin houses money jewelry you know just breaking into copper yards you know filling vans with copper yards and taking yeah. their vans and just driving them out straight through the gates you mm. know I just wanted money, you know, I just wanted like, mm. and like, it just came, it came a time then where I was waking it up at say eight, nine o'clock in the morning. And if I didn't have a giant beside me, it was a bag of bag of cork beside me, you know, and then I'd be thinking then I'll bring this fella, I'll bring that fella, and it just turned into Robbing cars, vans, jeeps, whatever, whatnot, like, you know, just yeah. trying to, just trying to make money, just trying to get by, like, yeah. you know, where, while, like, while other people, like, non-traveling people were getting degrees and diplomas, I was going around the street robbing, like, trying to, trying to make a living, while mm. they were getting a living through education, mm. you know what I mean? Like, it's tough. Yeah. It was tough, like. And you know? I suppose, like, most of us things get worse and get worse until eventually you ended up in prison yeah what age when you come in i was 21 20 21 19 i was 19 when it happened uh 
drunken argument, you know, I got out of control. Uh, influenced with drugs again, coke, tablets. Uh, you ended up getting a big sentence. I got 15 years, yeah. So you're you're 28 now, and yeah, you're in yeah. since you're 19. I'm in since I'm 21. Since you're 21, 21 yeah. 19 man. when it happened. Yeah. So I don't want to know the details of the case or anything like that, but yeah. we kind of understand how you got here. Yeah. So what was it like when you came in when you were 19? I'm, I tell you my story. I remember going into car prison across the road in the old one when I was 18, 19. Mm. Young punk, you know, with that attitude, the chip on the shoulder, was yeah, it a bit yeah. like that? Mm. Yeah, uh, it's coming in, Cassidy. <clears throat> it was pure green. Uh, didn't know what to expect. Uh, but I had a few cousins in there that kind of, yeah, they kind of took me under the wing and showed me the ropes a bit, you know. But uh, started a sentence. It was just like didn't want to do the school, didn't want to do nothing. It was me against them. I know that's the way I seen it at the start. Um. Then I was getting transferred from block to block over fighting and, and caught with phones and. Mm. Then I done that for about three and a half year, four year. And then it came down here in 2016, 17, 2017. And just down here for a few, about 12 months. And I just started getting involved in school in little bits, you know? Mm. And I kind of got a liking to it, you know, because we were getting off the yard and you were getting off the landing, you know? Yeah. But then before I knew then, like I started getting involved in courses in the school and it just changed my mindset about like acting the man, we'd say, yeah. in, in the jail, like, you know? Or I just wanted to just keep my head down and just try and get on with the best way I can, like, you know, mm. instead of like fighting and black yard and getting transferred from black to black. And it's, it's, it's not like, Prison is not a nice thing to do anyway, up or down, like, but when you're getting transferred from block to block, it's this. Like, mm. Did you get transferred around to a few different prisons? Yeah, I was in uh, Weefield, Mount Jai, Limerick, Cloverhill, Castlereagh, I was in Castlereagh, I was down here. That's uh, enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. And one, just enough in the yeah. first, what, two, three years? Like, first three and a half year, four years, yeah. Mm. But like, I suppose if, if, if the, the prison system didn't keep sending you around these, this little trip, I suppose you probably wouldn't have got saying, what the, f what the fuck? Like, I need to get my shit together. Yeah, yeah. This isn't doing me any good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to, I don't want it. And, you know, sometimes we need that little bit of a roost to get yeah, us yeah. to a stage where, listen, I, I, I don't want this anymore. And then you got into the education and mm. you got a little bit of a taste of it. And, the, the exact same thing happened to me. I knew I couldn't use my hands or my physicality anymore to get money or I didn't want to be drug dealing anymore to get mm -hmm. money. I knew I couldn't do these things anymore. So I said, I'm going to seek and I educate myself. Yeah. Because education, you can make your money, you can make a few quid from being educated, you know? So, and that's the route I went and I think it's great what you're doing, yeah. you know, um, in school. I think as well, you know, when you're young fella like that, um, when I think of my, my own self, I wasn't doing a big sentence, but around that, them ages, between 19 and 23, I would have been in and out a lot of small sentences. But I think you just don't have the maturity, you know? I think, you no, know, when, when you're a young man, before you come in, you're out, you're doing your own thing, you're taking drugs and, you know, going out with girls and doing all this joyriding mm. or whatever, Robin. And then you go into a prison where you're told exactly where to be in any given time. There's a lot of um, surveillance and supervision. It can be very hard to adjust to that. Mm, yeah. And I think it takes a little bit of time. But I think mature as well, do you know what I mean? You get a little bit older, I think my own, myself, like as I got a little bit older and I see the young fellas coming up 18, 19, when I was 24, 25, and you're looking at how they behave and you're thinking like, fucking hell, I used to be like that, you yeah, know? Yeah, you get a little yeah. bit cringy. And then when you start the, some of the officers, then you're nearly the same age as some of the officers, you get a little bit more, but I think maturity mm -hmm. and how we develop 
is a lot to play with it, you know. They testosterone levels as well, like they yeah. drop a little bit yeah, as you get yeah. older. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, so Speak for yourself, as yourself as another, <laughs> Well, we won't go down that route, no, James. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but you know, fuck it. Listen, all feel? you want then after a while is just to be a piece of life. Exactly. You, know? yeah. you, you learn how to be fighting. To, like. I think you learn how to do prison. A little bit better, yeah. And like, definitely, who yeah. wants to spend their life being transferred from one prison to the other prison? So, eventually, you settled in Cork. What age when you come here? 2017, 2017, yeah. Uh, what was it 25? About 25, yeah, yeah. 25, Did you interact with the prison services in terms of maybe a psychologist or a counselor or anything like that? Yeah, what I was, was I've seen, I've seen psychology for a while. Uh, I've done a number of courses with them as well, like uh, mentalization courses, and then like they're very helpful to be honest. Like I was thinking now, when, like when I heard people talking about the prisoners talking about in the yard, uh, psychology this and psychology that, I was thinking like, psychology, like go away with that, you know. Mm. Like I just want to do my own thing, like you know. What I mean? mm. But when they came up and I started talking to them, and I knew what they were about. Psychology, it does help psychology, like, you know, yeah. it really does help us change, change me. They help you, know. you with like aggression and anger yeah, and stuff like that. Yeah, definitely, definitely, 100%. Like, mm. so thinking before you kind of make a, a like, a, like, think before you kind of react, kind of thing, like, yeah. you know. And I never, I was never able to do that, like, mm. think, sit back for a second, think about it. I was just, something happened, bang. Yeah. You know, I was, I was reacting on it straight away. But now, like I'm able to sit back now and just think everything over and just mm. try and talk talk everything through. Like yeah, you know. there's something as well in uh, that I found difficult in treatment centres, you know, because you come into addiction treatment centre with this old street mentality, you know. But control and your aggression can be hard if you've never done it. Yeah. But like, if you want to have a good life and get on in your life, you have to be able to create that space between. Yeah. Right, he's being disrespectful to me here now, but if I go over and get stuck, then I'm going to get fired. Yeah. And if I'm going to keep getting fired, yeah. what kind of a life am I going to have? The doll and shitty flats and all these things. But that ability to just be annoyed with somebody and have a little bit of space between it and then react properly. Yeah. May I, I feel you're being disrespectful towards me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Calm down this small but rather than trying to dig. That make your life so much easier. Because you know? yeah. when you're reacting, then you're, you might get retaliation. You might be looking over your shoulder. It takes yeah. all that out of your life, you know? Mm. Definitely, man. Yeah. And you know, when you said you started out in the education, what kind of courses were you doing at the start? <clears throat> the start, the first one I done was anger management course. That went on for ten weeks. I finished that. Then I got into CIT courses, where every week someone would come in from CIT and the outside, and yeah, they talk it through about like. Could be an entrepreneur coming in this week and he'll talk you through business and mm -hmm. you now for setting up life when you get out like what do you want to get into and someone yeah. will come in and talk about sports you know I've done that uh then i just wanted to like to do the red cross i started red cross i'm involved in the red cross now about three years mm. what's that like what's what do you do with them it's a good course <clears throat> um you're trying to make the prison a safer environment, like, you know, mm. a better environment. You're going around, you're spreading awareness about mental health. Uh, you're having open days in, in school and, like, you're, like, you're check, taking people's blood pressure and you're checking their blood pressure and their BMI and you're making posters and cell drops about, like, mental health, Yeah, you know, and about the dangers of drugs, the danger, the difference between uppers and downers. And yeah. we learned, I got a certificate of uh, first aid and CPR. We learned to do a C a CPR course. That was through the Red Cross as well. Mm. And it was very, I enjoyed it, like, you know, I enjoyed it. It went on for like yeah. eight months or something. And, uh, I enjoyed it, you know. Do you know, you said something there I think is very important as well, right? Um, the cell drops, is that just dropping into a cell and having a chat or something? Or is it? Yeah, yeah, we do that but as well. Yeah. The other day you spoke about um, the effects of uppers and downers. Yeah. Do you know, when someone comes into prison, uh, they may be doing a six-month sentence or a 12-month sentence and they're off everything. 
yeah. and they'll go back out and they'll use heroin or crack or whatever or tablets the exact same as the, the moment they came in and they overdose a yeah. lot of people the amount of people that die like prisoners yeah. that die their the, tolerance tolerance yeah. is down though. do you talk about that in the red cross do you do, talk yeah. with lads about be careful not for going back out using mm. Because if you go hit the fucking hit it hard again, yeah. you might croak it because your body might not be able to tolerate the amounts of drugs that you had when you that you would take when you came in. Yeah, you know? I, I'm, I'll be a facilitator in the Red Cross now, like, and uh, that was one of the courses that myself and another prisoner ran with prisoners in the jail, and it was overdose prevention. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just more or less about getting out when you have a low tolerance. Like just about using, like you just don't use the same amount as you are before you came in because all yeah. your tolerance been down. If you do want to use, like have someone with you, yeah, you know. So if something does happen to you, like they can help. You know what I mean? Mm, exactly. Yeah. And also, it does I, happen a lot. But yeah. I, I, I don't know if I said it before, but I remember getting out in TR one day and going out and overdosing and being back in the next day because obviously when I went to sign on, I was out of my head still, you know, and coming back in mm. and all the boys thought I'd have to bring in the Lord of Knock yeah. because I was storing on my head for three or four days by right? knocking on me. I was just <laughs> only overdosing tablets would be goose for the day, like yeah. for, for a few days. But 24 hours I was out. But I was lucky because I, I didn't die. Yeah. But I know people that did die. Mm. You know, so yeah. it's something that it's your your right to bring it up and it's great that you're actually addressing it. Yeah. So you know, when you say you facilitate, do you like do groups with prisoners and stuff? Yeah, groups of prisoners, yeah. Like anyone who wants to join the Red Cross, like they're, they're, they're welcome to join it. Like, and on, you'll have the likes of myself, a facilitator now, that'll come in and help, help with the group because I'll have more experience. The f- yeah. new fellas coming yeah. in, I'll be able to show them a few bits and pieces that I learned when I was yeah. starting off as well. Like, and it's just like you found, find it good. Yeah. Are you involved in the travel mediation service? I am, yeah. Do you want to tell us a little bit about that? What it is first of all, and what you're doing it. Uh, this travel remediation uh, group is a it's a course that we've done in here. is about um, helping like to resolve conflict. Yeah. Before before it actually becomes physical, mm. you know. And it's a course that we've done in here. Who was it again? Came in there. Uh, Frank. It's Frank. Uh, yeah, yeah. And Chris. It, yeah, them two came in. They don't know what I think it was on about twelve weeks or something, and. They're trained, they're, they train you like to, to talk to one side, talk to the other side, but to be non judgmental and don't take sides, like, you know. Mm. And uh, it actually works because I've tried it out here and there a few times, and when there was conflict, right to kick off in there, and it was solved, like. James, you, you made a very fair point last time we were talking about this, you know, the mediation between travelers, right? Um, and the actual, like, it, there's so much behind it, right? You speak, you spoke about, um, you know, the women, the fear that these kind of, yeah. these these fights cause within within families, especially when they're young kids and, and the, the, yeah. the, the, the women. Outside of the women, like, you, yeah. would have, you would have two fellas involved in a fight, yeah. but then you have two sites yeah. or two states then everybody's on edge. Mm. Everybody's paranoid. You can't go to the shop. So yeah. like it's what, what, what's a small fight turns into a big fucking yeah. a big yeah. thing. Nobody wants it. Everybody's afraid. The mental health is gone. Then people then use drugs because they're so mm. paranoid, you know. So the fact that you're kind of yeah. trying to nip it in the bud, yeah. it saves Square. so much hardship down the line. Mm. And, and you, you see it's working here. Yeah, and the lads, yeah. yeah, they're doing fantastic work, Frank and yeah. Chris. Yeah. So do you know when you're engagement with travelers in here is it hard to get them to buy into it at the start or yeah it was like because i know like i think among travelers man it's just, it's just pride isn't it? yeah pride mm. and it's just i'm better than him and i'm not going to give in to him and stubbornness and his. like but when you break it down to them like what the, what the consequences can be in here like they kind of get get the, the like the gist of it in like you know look look we're just better off shaking hands you know just squash it because yeah. if not we're going to put on the bus we're going to be hanging out you know what I mean? yeah. yeah so what you have to do there is find the resolution where nobody feels like that they've given up yeah that, like nobody's won and nobody's last or you know it's quits yeah. because then there's nobody's pride and reputation because it's a big thing you know what i mean yeah. not to be bettered by anybody else so like i'd say it's not easy but if you can do it fair play yeah 
it's also in pr- prison is a fantastic place as well for anybody to get educated you know not just not like not just travelers everybody because like when i came in as i said earlier i wasn't educated but when i was in the prisons uh, when i was in the midlands and in the classes there was an awful lot of travelers and they were in there and, and they were actually it was like they were just learning to read and write at, at whatever age they were at at that point because of whatever went on in school or whatever as you spoke a yeah. while ago and it was actually a great thing to, to see that if not for just them but also for me to know that we were at the same level and we were kind of going through it together you yeah. know and um, it's a great opportunity for, yeah. for people to come in here and look at their lives and and just say right i want to educate myself i want to learn to read i yeah, want to learn yeah. to write it's the basic things really yeah yeah, yeah i've seen a lot of that in the home like the travelers yeah. that they're just they still are doing it like in the in this mm-hmm. in the english classes and learn to read and write i was, I was doing it myself when i first came in i could barely read and write myself like yeah even to fill out and like i'm I'm sure did you ever fill out an application for anything before you never, come in here me neither yeah. i never filled out nothing but when you go over there, you'll be able to fill out an application for medical care if you want one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a form for the college if you want to go to the CIT, a Susie grant thing. No, I had to get a bit of help with that even when I got out. But you'll be able to do all these things yeah, yeah. because you're after educating yourself in here. And some of the most important things that you need for... I didn't even know what a PPS number was, straight up. <laughs> I did not know what yeah. it was like when I came in before I came into prison. You know, I hadn't a clue because I really didn't, didn't care. I just floated through life. But you'll be able to do all these things when you grow there, mate. Do you know what I mean? And it allows you to be that's independent. Great, but it's yeah. proud. There's pride in that for, for you and to be able to say, yeah, I'll fill that out for you, for a cousin, if he wants yeah, something done. Yeah, yeah, of course. Give it to me here and I'll help you out. That's great. Like, and you'll be able to look back at your own your sentence and say, do you know what? It was, that was probably the best thing I ever done was get educated. Yeah. Uh, I know, I knew the jolly even sort. I didn't believe in certain hours, but then I passed the English and maths on two subjects. Congratulations. Not, not easy, not no, easy either. No, especially over the COVID as well. You see, the school was closed over the COVID, so I had to get the homework sent over to the, to the cell. I had to study everything in the cell without a teacher and, yeah, passed it anyway. Fuck fair play, yeah. yeah. And, you know, when you left school, as you said earlier on, you had problems with reading and writing. So, you know, when you come back into prison, uh, it's your first time in prison yeah. so when you come into prison did you have to kind of learn to brush up on the reading and writing first yeah and yeah, then kind of work your yeah, way up yeah yeah but the teachers the teachers in the school are very very good like you know yeah. very very good fair play to them like, you know, and, like they'll help you whatever they listen to you anyway for starters like you know not like the teachers I had when I was growing up as a child they'll listen to you and they will help you they'll, yeah. they'll even go out of the way to help you like you know yeah. and like it was a big part of them by you doing the leaving search, you know. Mm-hmm. They kind of pushed me into doing it. Yeah. But I, like, over the education, over the things I went through when I was a child growing up in school, that knocked my confidence yeah. of going for something mm-hmm. like the leaving search. Yeah. You know, because I, when I came into jail, I was thinking school. And then it was straight away I had in my head mm-hmm. teachers in my, in, in my school on the outside. Are they the same? Are they not? You know, that was like my confidence was kind of mm-hmm. down. But when I started getting talking to teachers, we really, really are sound like. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. No. Do you know what we bad. need? Yeah. We, go on. Go on. I, I was going to say, like, my experience was the same with teachers. What we need are teachers like that in normal schools. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Teachers who, who are, have been educated about trauma, about mm-hmm. difficulties, learning difficulties that we'll, we'll have, you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm dyslexic, dyslexic as, as well. Um. And, but I didn't know that growing up as a young child. Yeah, I got yeah. that assessment in third level education by an educational psychologist and they told me I was dyslexic, you know. But I went through my whole life not knowing that and thinking that I couldn't read because I was stupid, because I was thick, because I wasn't able to you know all these different things. Yeah, but yeah. it wasn't because of any of these things. It was because I had learning difficulty, which was dyslexia. I learned completely differently to everybody else, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and 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 there's probably another I don't know how many prisoners in here, but I'd say there's a massive percentage of prisoners in here with dyslexic yeah, who are that, dyslexic yeah. as well and it's undiagnosed, you know, and maybe ADHD un- undiagnosed and yeah. things like that. Yeah. You know, and, and, and I'd always say to anybody, to get to know yourself a little bit better, find out if you are dyslexic and, and 
it takes away that kind of stigma that you have on yourself then yeah. that critic that there's something wrong with you you're stupid or you're thick but when you find out you're dyslexic and you you understand what it is to be dyslexic the pressure comes off then yeah. so, you know yeah, what that's yeah. okay I have a learning difference to everybody else yeah. you know even like, like yourselves know I didn't have a great experience in school either and when I was gone when I come into recovery I was thinking about education and like I was thinking oh, I, I, when I finished school I said education is, school is not for me and I would never go back there yeah. But when you go back as an adult, it's a lot different. And I think there's something we do in adult education in colleges or level three, fours and fives, whatever, through the ETBs. There's something we do there that's better than school in, as a child, you know? I think yeah. when you go back to school as an adult, first of all, you don't have to be there if you don't want that. Because you're an adult, if you don't want to do the course, you don't have to do the course, you know? Mm. So yeah, I always have that option. But I think learning as an adult, it's more fun. It's the teachers are better. It's a better relationship. It's a better dynamic. So I think, like, if anybody's watching and they had bad experiences in school and they think that that's it, education is not for them, don't be so quick to close it off because yeah. you might love it and start with a taster course, you know, the basic course, and you might work your way up and to a leaving search, you know, and you could even go beyond that. There's no reason you can't go to college and then come back and help others, you know. Yeah. Um, so you got an award recently. Yeah. Do you want to tell us? The President's Award, the Gash get to call it, yeah. That's huge. Yeah, when that, it took me three year, three years to complete it. There's three different levels to it. You have the bronze, silver, and then you have gold. Uh, I, I got, I learned about the Gash to the Red Cross again, like, uh, I think it was Governor O'Brien came in, we had a, a Red Cross, we were doing the Red Cross, and it's part of the Red Cross. I think it's once a month, do we have, you get meetings, you have meetings, we say, with the Governor and Chiefs, this week and then the following week, the following month and might be having a meeting with the medics and then the following month it could be psychology mm. now we're talking about things within the prison trying to make it a safer place like and I think it was Governor Brian comes in one, one morning and we're chatting away and he mentions a gasket to me and I was saying yeah yeah I wouldn't mind I wouldn't mind doing that my brother was here at the time and he started with me as well and we started like fair play to Governor Ryan, he's very he was very good to me as well. Like, you know, mm. like he gave me he gave me chances as well. Like and we started, but I finished the bronze. Um my brother finished it as well, the two of us finished it together. And he got he gets a uh, lock on house, he goes up to an open prison. And then I just started. I think the bronze went down for was it thirteen weeks or sixteen weeks or something. And you have to do three three uh, activities for the for the thirteen weeks or sixteen weeks. You have to do a physical physical activity. That could be for the gym. You might do yeah. the gym once a week. Then you have to do the community. I've done the Red Cross for the community. And for the personal, it was a job I had at the time. I was working in the hurley shop where we learned to fix hurleys and yeah. making benches and all that kind of crack. And we finished that. We got a medal, got the bronze medal. And I went on to the silver. I think that goes on for 26 weeks of silver then and uh, for the community for the silver I joined the, the Samaritans the listeners mm. and I was getting assigned by them every every week they were coming in every Sunday and for the physical I said I away I at the gym like and we'd, we'd like you have to do like a team a teamwork activity as well you know to come into the end of the end of each course, you have to do like a teamwork activity. Yeah. And for the silver, the silver one, I um, I organised a, a fundraiser for penny dinners. Brilliant. And uh, I got one euro off each prisoner in the prisons, and that came up to three hundred euro. And then Governor Bryan said to me that he'd double it; he'd throw another three hundred euro to it, and oh. we send it out uh, to Catherine Tommy or something. Uh, yeah, she was on the podcast before. Yeah, and uh, that was done anyway, and. Swear at the gym and for the first for the personal one, it was I, well, I was I think I was trying to become a, a COVID cleaner or something. Yeah, I trying to become a COVID cleaner in, in the, the prison because I was clean, clean. I was cleaning the yards at the time. It was as a job, like you know. And uh, for the gold one, then it got, that goes on for a full year. And I was I was doing the I done my leaving cert for the gold one. 
for the for the personal and I was still yeah. I was still with involved with the Red Cross and the Smartens and I was in the gym and it was a uh, for the personal one then it was kind of kind of had to chop and change with it because school was closed so mm. I couldn't come up to the school the whole time and stick at something in the school so I could be still I might have to study something for six weeks and then change something else and do something else and no, there was there was a lot of lot, a lot of hard work on it. But, imagine, uh, yeah. It paid off anyway, like you know, we got the got gold medal. Congratulations! Uh, yeah, thanks, man. It's great, though, three years work and not to finally get the achievement at the end yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. What about the? How do you feel about that? Like, does is it just like this? I'm speaking all from my own experience. Can you accept that as a really good achievement? Are you, do you are you, do you feel proud of yourself, basically? Of course I am. A hundred percent, you should be. Like, that's the biggest thing I ever done in my life. It's massive. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. Like I, uh, when I completed my my um my degree, uh, we had no graduation because it was done during COVID, and there was something like a five second clip where they called my name out on on online and on, on the internet. And I sat there boy, and I just got this real strong sense of achievement and I was very, very proud of myself. And, yeah. and I looked at my wife's face, you know, and, and 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 I could see it was a little bit teary. She got emotional and I got a little bit emotional as well, like, because when I looked back, when I walked in the, the, the door of the prison, like, I I could not read or write, you know, to, to anybody else's level. I didn't know the, the, the alphabet. I didn't know the months of the year. Yeah. You know, I never filled out an application in my life. Mm. You know, there's a great sense of achievement for like I, I'm sitting here now and I'm, I admire it because like yeah. I know how difficult it is to sit inside in a cell and to study. It's not yeah, easy, yeah. like there's a lot of hard work on it, like you know, especially I, with COVID as yeah. well. Like yeah, so the school I mean, closed and all. Yeah. You know, like the, it'd be very easy to say, "Fuck this, yeah. I'm not doing this," but you draw on with it. You mentioned something there about the listeners. Yeah. Now, uh, the lady we spoke to in Nimmer Prison told us a little bit about the listener. Would you want to tell us a little bit about what your role in in it in Cork is? I'd be a facilitator as well, and in the listeners as well. And uh, it's just like people having bad days, you know, people feeling under the weather, like feeling down and out, depressed, suicidal. They ask for a listener. We'll go down to them. But we can't give them advice. It's just yeah. listening. Yeah. It's like Smartens inside here. Yeah, 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 yeah. And like we're trying to cheer them up. Mm. You know. Like start of the COVID there, like we got a lot of calls. You know, like calls now like we could be walking down the land and I like we have jackets in here, red jackets with our names on them that says listen on the back of them like Yeah. And on your day you'll throw it on. Day you're on duty, you'll throw it on like and I often told on, and fellas, like, fellas, you wouldn't even be thinking mm. that, oh, you think to yourself, like, he's all right, that fella sound, he's fella, no worries. And they come up to me, and like, the stuff that they talk about, like, you're just saying, where does this come from, like, because when I look at you, like, you wouldn't think there's nothing wrong there at all, like, mm. you no, know, the background and growing up, mm. stuff that's been happening to them, like, you know. Sensitive information, yeah, like. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, big time. Yeah, you know, and like it's very personal, you know. Mm. It's a. Uh, How do you cope with a lot of that information? Then you know, because like if someone's talking to you about something, right, and them that they, because when you're in prison, you haven't got the crutch of alcohol and drugs to block out all the trauma yeah, anymore, yeah. or whatever may have happened in your life, or whatever you drank and drugged on, and you're left with it in here because there's no drugs in here to use or whatever else. Yeah. And like to be a listener, then like when a lot of people do think about killing themselves in prison, yeah. you know, and it's, that's the reality of it, you know. And I know I did, yeah, probably every day for a long time. Um, but like for the likes of yourselves, no, who, who's a listener and, and and somebody's opening up really, like it, you have to be really trusted to be a listener by by the prison system, yeah. Do you know how to be a because they know that. You're not going to go outside of that cell and start talking about whatever your man told yeah, you, you yeah. know? That's a big responsibility for you. And it also must be a lot to be able to take in whatever they tell you and be able to deal with it. So, you know? Yeah, it is. Like, some cards are like a very, very, very tough. Like, yeah. I got cards there and I'm like, 
I'd be smashed for a week in the cell. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't like, I would keep thinking. It was dragging me down. Yeah. But we, we like, the other, the other smart listeners in here as well, like, if we're feeling down about mm-hmm. something that we heard or a call that we got, we can go to them yeah. and have a chat with them about it. Okay. So that's taking that off, off most of it off our chest as well. Like, and also, yeah. it's not too bad. Like, you know, it's, that's good. That's it's good. great though that yeah. you're there and you can help people through yeah, tough yeah. times in their lives, knowing that you're seeing somebody that, that's respected in the prison. You know, yeah. a few hundred men, but you're the one that they'll come to because they trust you, that you're not going to open your mouth, that there will be no judgment. It's just great to mm. be able to do that. Yeah, yeah. You have a few years left, haven't you? I've run five years left, yeah. Yeah. What's the what's the plan for you? Have you any plan like for what would you love to do when you get out? Have you any like a job you'd like to do or like to be married and kids and stuff? I want to want to get married and settle settle down, like have have my own family. Uh, like I got locked up when I was a child. I'm getting out as a man, like you know. Mm. Uh, I'm just gonna move over to the UK, I'd say. Yeah. I'm going to settle down over there and have my family over there. Yeah. You know, because... Keep, like, keep, what I was going to say is just keep educating yourself and open up more opportunities, more doors. Yeah. yeah. You know? Um, you know, and... But, you know, the education courses you do, the community stuff you do, the peer-to-peer mentoring, the, the mediation, all that. If, if you really like that, maybe there's a job in it for you. Mm-hmm. Maybe, yeah, you, yeah. maybe you do like a community development, you community social care, some sort of a degree when you get out. Because if you're enjoying it here, you could actually do that as you're living. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, if yeah. you're good at it and you enjoy it, that could be a pathway of fire when you get out, you know? You could even start the course when you're inside to some open university courses, stuff like that. You've got your whole life ahead of you as well, you know? Yeah, of course, man. Yeah. Um, and I come into recovery, you know, um, when I was your age, 28 actually, but it wasn't until I was kind of in my early 30s that I kind of uh, was in a position where I was mature enough to you know, be able to get a job and all these things. Like So, long time in prison, but you've a long time out of it as well. Yeah, know? yeah, of course. And yeah. you'll go on and do good things, and it'd be great to see you when you get out. And um, I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Oh, yeah, I loved it. Yeah. Thank you for coming Is there anything in. you want to say? Dad? Family, you want to say hello? No, just, or maybe yeah. other travellers that's yeah. watching, maybe that's caught up in the madness, yeah. you know? Yeah, just like any travellers watching, like just that thinks that education is, 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 is like, is not for them. Try it, because mm-hmm. I, I, I taught the same, like, you know, of the experience I had growing up in school. Mm-hmm. Uh, try it and like, it, it'll stand to you, you know, just yeah. get up to the school and do something. You know, yeah. get involved in courses, mm. do do something with your with your time, like you know. Yeah. It's but it'd be well worth it at the end of it, like you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wise words. And uh, no, just keep going from strength to strength, Michael. Uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Like I'm looking at you there, like you seem very, very, very relaxed. Like in mm. the fidgetiness of the young players has gone over you. you yeah, know? thank God. Yeah. <laughs> but you seem grand and relaxed and calm, you know. And it seems like you're after growing emotionally and. Yeah. Physically, because you're a big lad as well, like, so I just want to wish you all the best by him, fucking, I mean, that's sincere. Yeah, thanks very much, man. Thank you. Best of luck, and thanks for coming on again. Thanks for having me, Julian. And thanks for uh, Pete, or or Governor O'Brien, for the invitation, and for the Irish Prison Service for Mm. facilitating us again. And uh, see everybody next week. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.